encouraging one another. We're supposed to stir each other, one another up, to do love and good works through encouragement. Encouraging one another is actually pulling out the good you already see them doing. Here's the thing. People thrive on encouragement and usually shrink under discouragement. What is the best way to show someone love that's a Christ follower and to stir them up to do good works is actually call out the things that you see them already doing instead of telling them all the things that they should be doing. There's an interesting statistic. It was a... a, Scientific study, and it did this, they looked at a set of tests. They gave all of these young people the same set of tests, but they changed the instructions, okay? So the instructions on half of the tests were encouraging instructions. Basically, like, you can do this. You're going to do great. Here's how to do it. Just do your best. On the other half of the test, they were discouraging instructions. This is going to be a really hard test. Just so you know, you may not get them all right, probably not going to. You know what's the interesting thing? The exact same test, the half that got discouraging instructions got 72% less. 72% less correct answers. Exact same test, exact same kind of student demographic, 72% less. Our words and how we present our words matter. We can give someone the exact same platform to do something, but how we give it to them matters. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm going to take a splig of water because I've got something in my throat. Turn to your left and right and encourage someone. (laughs) Thank you. Okay, reel it back in. Reel it back in. It's enough encouragement. (laughs) There is this idea, right, that, that, that how we say something matters. How we stir each other up matters. It matters. We've had a lot of young people under us in leadership. And now I feel like because most of them are far enough along, I can say this with open and honesty. There's often James and I looked at each other and we're like, I don't know if this is going to work out. I mean, there's often times we look at each other and we said, we don't know if we're going to work out. (laughs) Not for marriage. No, let me clarify. (laughs) Not for marriage. We have actually never said that to each other. I'm going to take more water now. (laughs) Next thing you know, the gossip train, right, is going to be like, Pastor James and Maria are having issues. We need to pray for their marriage. No, we are good. We love each other. I will kiss him later if it makes you feel better. (laughs) <clears throat> but often, right, like we look and we said, <laughs> you say, ew, <laughs> maybe we do have problems that I just don't know about. Uh, <laughs> no, but there's often, but there's this moment that as soon as like, it's like the enemy actually comes in and distorts your view and then you start to see the negativity. Why? Because we live in a world and a culture that wants to point out the wrong more than the right. It's easier. It's the path that is most traveled in our brains, so it becomes really easy to become discouraging, to become that critical person. But you know what I've noticed about our young leaders, whom I love and whom are thriving, is that the more that I said, God, show me what you put in them and let me call that out, and the more you do that, they have all, and I mean all, surpassed anything that James and I could have imagined. Because when you call out the good, it encourages someone to do more good. When you call out what God has actually put in someone, it starts to overshadow the hurt that they feel. 
Because I promise you, each one in this room and each one in their living room at home watching this has heard way more negative things than they have positive in their lifetime. Stir up one another for love and good works through encouragement, encouraging what you see. And here is the key to it. it says this, not neglecting to gather together. It's interesting because it gives this command that we all know, right, to stir up to, for love and good works and encourage one another and all these things. But it gives the context to where it's supposed to happen. Are these things supposed to happen in our day-to-day -day life? Absolutely. Be that person that champions people. If you get nothing else from this sermon, please hear that. Be that person that when you speak to someone in a day, you're being the life and not the death. Be the person that calls out the good, that encourages someone. And you know, I know, don't get me wrong, I know that some people, it's hard to find something. You know, let's be honest, there's people that it's just, you know, I, and I, don't get me wrong, I think that people, there's this uh, great book um, that, that says it like this, that ask the question, what has happened to someone instead of what's wrong with them? Because everyone has a story and there's a reason why they behave the way that they behave. But where they land today because of what's happened to them, it's really hard to find something encouraging to say. There are those people. But guess what? God still made them. He's put things in them. And your job, Christ follower, is to actually call it out. And to say, even though I don't see this in you right now, guess what? I think this is what God's put in you. This is what God's made you for. Let me call that out. And all of that is really important, right? Really important that we do that in our day-to-day -day lives. But it's really interesting that they put it in a certain context. And that certain context is this. It says... Not neglecting to gather together. I want to take a moment and I want to unpack that. Why? Because we live in a culture that church and gathering is very fluid. So I want to make sure that we actually unpack what this word means and what it's talking about. So the word gather together here, the gather, is not just like a having dinner together. It's a ceremonial gathering. That's what the word means. It actually means a ceremonial gathering. So it's saying gathering uh, for ceremony. And the ceremony would have purpose and a plan. So can you do this in your homes with a few people around a table? Absolutely. But have you gone into that time with a plan and a purpose of the gathering? That is what it's talking about here, is that as Christians, there is the gathering that is supposed to happen, and the scripture is clear about what's supposed to happen in those gatherings, right? What's supposed to happen? Some of those things. We're supposed to bring new songs before the Lord, that corporate singing together. We're supposed to preach the word. It says bring out scripture and preach it, discuss it, talk about it. That's supposed to happen in the gathering. Teaching. Prophetic words, speaking the words that God has given us to one another through prophecy. God, you're saying this about someone else. I'm going to go and share that with them because you're speaking to me and I'm going to go speak to them. These are all things we see in scripture that are supposed to happen in the gathering. Here are some things that we don't always think about, and that's why I'm bringing it up. It says, stir one another to love and good works through encouragement. When we gather, do we come in with a mindset that part of our plan and purpose of gathering is to stir one, and up, one another up for, with love and good works through encouragement? When I read this, it changed my heart posture. It actually said, God, there's something I'm missing when I come to here on a Sunday morning. I haven't actually asked you that question, God, what encouraging word do you have for someone? What can I speak to someone else that's going to stir them up 
to do more love and good works. It's supposed to happen in this corporate gathering. What I was looking for this morning, um, but apparently I put it on my counter because I took it out of my bag this morning to look and make sure it was in there and I didn't put it back in, um, <clears throat> which is okay. Uh, what I'm looking through this morning, I'd like to point out that this church, especially where we are today, and I would... We are looking honestly in our ministry here. It hasn't always been like that for us. But where we are, out, are today, nine times out of ten on a Sunday, we do hear encouragement. Talking about what God is doing in your guys' lives and, and, and just what God's doing in this place and excitement and joy, and that's great. But sometimes we... we as human beings tend to pick up on the one thing we didn't like. And so why do I say all that? I say that because what I had in my bag, which I thought was just so meaningful for this sermon, is um, many of you are great at encouraging words to each other and to us as your leaders and all of those things. But there was this um, lady in our church, and I didn't ask for permission, so I'm not going to call her name out. And she came and she gave me a card. It was a homemade card. found it in my bag. Again, this morning I'd read it. And I was actually leaving that day to go to a uh, conference for the city and um, with a whole bunch of people from across our province and was feeling a little bit uh, insecure in those moments. And, uh, and she gave me this card. And I opened it up when I got there and I read through it. And it was just so encouraging. This ha homemade card and the whole inside and the back was just all written out with words of encouragement. It was like, this is what God's done in my life. And this is what I see God's doing in your life. And I'm so thankful for you and James. And I'm thankful for your kids. And here's what I see God doing. And, and you know... It changed my perspective going into that week. Something that seems so simple and so small, something that isn't seen and it isn't showy and it isn't all of those things, but it cha can change someone's direction. Right? It can change someone's direction. When you do, I'm going to call the worship team up. When you do the gathering, this is what it says, when you gather together. It actually says, not neglecting to gather together. So clearly, these persecuted Jews who were feeling overwhelmed and discouraged decided that gathering together was the one thing they just couldn't do that day. And what he's saying, he's saying, don't, don't neglect it. I know you're feeling overwhelmed and discouraged, and I know that there's the weight of the world on your shoulders, and I know that it seems easier to fall into the shadows and hide in the background. I know all of those things, but he's saying, don't do it. Don't neglect to gather together, but encourage one another. All the more as you see the day approaching. My encouragement for you today, church, is two things. I believe you are an encouraging church. We heard it last weekend. There's been a lot of tough things that have happened out of this place. I grew up in this church, I know. There's a lot of pain. There's a lot of things that have happened. But you know what you capitalized on last weekend? You capitalized on all the things God has done and not what he didn't do. You are an encouraging church, and I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that that is your heart posture. But this, pastor, this passage says, do it even more. Do it even more. Let us be known that we peer pressure each other, not in changing how we dress or what we look like, but in challenging each other to do more good, to be better at loving to be more encouraging, to be the ones that call out the good and not the bad. 
be the ones that put an arm around someone who clearly is struggling and don't point out all the reasons why we see them struggling, but point out what God is doing. Can we be that church? Hey, church, can we be that church? Can we make that commitment that says we're going to do this? We're going to be real with one another when we're struggling and we're going to allow someone else to come and put their arm around us and say, you know what, I just need an encouraging word and say, okay, I'm going to encourage you. Let me tell you all the good. Let me tell you all the things that God is doing. It's a hard thing to do sometimes. Let's be that church. Let me pray for you. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you that you have called us to gather and to do it for a purpose. God, that you've called us to stir one another up for love and good works through calling out the good. God, would you help our minds be guarded against all of the world's discouragement, all of the negativity, all of the pointing out everything that is wrong. God, I just pray that you'd protect our minds from that and that we would, we would hear your thoughts. God, that we would live in freedom, in access to you. As we listen to your thoughts. God, I pray that you would give us each an encouraging word this week. And as we continue to gather, would you remind us to come here prepared to speak life to one another. We thank you that you are the life giver. God, that you call out what you've placed in us. And I pray this morning that you would heal any of those hearts that have had negativity spoken over them. God, I pray for healing for those hearts that have had people who have spoken things that were not from you over them. Would you get rid of those this morning? Would you heal that hurt this morning? And God, I pray that you would replace that with your words. God, replace that with your vision. For everyone here in the building and everyone online, everyone in their living rooms, God, I just pray that your presence would be tangible. That a father that looks at them with a smile, that loves them, that that's what they would see this morning. We thank you that our job is so much easier than what Christ did on that cross. Let us have hearts that are thankful for that. In your precious name, amen.